What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny For Real. Today we're talking about the conference finals. I think this is the first time I've actually done a video on the conference finals, um, but here it is. I've been having so, so much fun here on Kenny For Real. I've made it a priority to try to upload as much as it is possible um, because though the main channel is amazing, I love doing what I do over there. Talking basketball is like my passion. So I don't know why it took me so long to really transition this channel into that, but you guys have been showing a lot of love. Yesterday we uploaded a video of me reacting to the Billy Donovan news as a Bulls fan, and that was fun. So if you, if you miss any of the videos, uh, a lot of them are still relevant. Like the NBA ha has been happening so fast in this bubble that sometimes topics like this, like this topic today may not be relevant two days from now because we got the next game in the series. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I do want to talk about Lakers Nuggets because game three was incredible. It had the it looked like it wasn't going to be. And then the Lakers put together that run. And it, it ultimately we saw Jamal Murray just be amazing to like Jamal Murray had three plays where he had a three pointer. He had the dip down to down to, to Paul Millsap, who was hiding in a dunker spot. And then he had the three over Alice Caruso. Three amazingly clutch, clutch, clutch plays to secure this win for them because the tables were turning, man. You know what I'm saying? The Lakers were looking like the comeback kids and not the other way around. And one of the main things I want to talk about in today's video is kind of like, I don't watch the talking heads on the ESPNs or the Fox Sports or all of these other platforms that do, you know, sports talk. Because at the end of the day, I see them as like people that are concerned about the ratings above all. And then, there, you know, there's a little disconnect there because I can understand why the ratings, the ratings are significant. I mean, your, your show doesn't continue unless people are watching it. So you see some of those people may have opinions that aren't really their opinions, but they say it because they get people talking. And it works because even though I don't watch the shows, I'm going to talk about some of the shows in this moment right here. You know what I'm saying? And if I was on TV, ratings would be a priority, but not to that extent. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not saying crazy stuff just for the sake of ratings. It's just not who I am. Um, I mean, we're getting 100,000 views per video here of me just being myself and not having to say anything outlandish. So, you know what I'm saying? So, when the Clippers blew that 3-1 lead to the Nuggets, I saw a lot of the talking heads on Twitter. or where, Like, if it's going to be a 30-second clip on Twitter of their show, I'm going to click it. I'm not going to watch the whole show, but I'll click the 30 seconds. And... I'm not saying names, but I saw a few people basically saying congratulations to LeBron for securing your championship, cakewalk, Clippers let us down, no competition type thing. Like the Lakers are going to just sweep, sweep, sweep the conference finals, sweep the finals, nothing really matters. And then I also see people on Twitter with that same opinion. And I don't know if people on Twitter are getting their opinion from those shows or whatever, but it's just not true. The Nuggets are real. Like, I, like what, do the, what do the Nuggets have to do to be considered real in your eyes? Win the series, and then we can start talking about them being real? After game one versus the Utah Jazz, on the Ramble, if you remember the Ramble, one of the things I said about them, I had a whole, like, 10-minute segment about the Nuggets, and one of the things I said was, like, other than, like, the Bucks, which was wrong, other than the Bucks, the Lakers, and the Clippers, if there was a team that was, like, fourth in my eyes, if I had money, if I was a betting man, I would put it on the Nuggets. And I laid it all out that, like, hey, they have the best center in basketball. I can say that confidently at this point. The best center in basketball. They have an emerging superstar in Jamal Murray who's making that contract that they gave him look like a good contract. Because I remember when it was given out, I was one of the people like, yo, Jamal Murray ain't even ain't even showed us that much. He has glimpses. He has shown glimpses. But he hasn't been able to do it consistently. Now he's doing it consistently. So that contract looks cool. So they have a superstar, Jokic. I know he doesn't look the traditional, fit the traditional superstar, but it is what it is. He is a superstar and an extremely good playoff player. And Jamal Murray, who's an emerging superstar, and I don't know how things look for him next year or the year after that if he'll ever get an all-star appearance. But as he, if he's playing the way he's playing right now, he is an emerging superstar. And then the role players fit well. They play well. We haven't seen a lot of great Jeremy Grant offense in this series until game three. But defensively, he's always going to be that guy. Michael Porter Jr. is a guy that could occasionally go out there. I mean, this is really his first NBA season. Sometimes he can be like the X Factor. They have all the things to be considered a very good team. And they're coached very, very well. So I don't understand the notion that LeBron and the Lakers have this cakewalk. Again, of course, the Lakers are still the favorite. But there's no way people that are watching, that watched any of the last couple series can just say that this is a cakewalk. And I know LeBron and the rest of the team don't see it as that because they've watched it. LeBron will keep referring to them as the comeback kids because he's aware of what they can do when they're back against the wall. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really understand the notion that this is a cakewalk for LeBron again. I would, I'm still picking them to win this series. But if the Nuggets ended up winning, I don't think it's that much of a 
of an upset because we just saw what they did for the past couple rounds. We know what they're capable of. They didn't just come back on a 3-1 against a normal team. They came back on a 3-1 against a team that a lot of the people consider the heavy favorite to win it all. So it's not it's not this cakewalk. But other than that, I do want to talk about some of the things I've seen from this series and some of the things I think are, are interesting. Uh, like I mentioned, Jokic is the best center in basketball. Some of the shots that he is hitting and attempting is ridiculous. Other than that one va- very late last game where he just kind of threw it up and hit the opposite side of the backboard, that was a wild one. But Jamal Murray had three straight possessions to close out this game. And you're like, bro, st- he stopped the bleeding because the Lakers were there. And that veteran ship, that, that vet, the, vets, the vets, the rondos of the, of the team – we're coming out and bringing him back. But he had the the three, the first three. Then he finds Paul Millsap sitting in the dunker spot. The Lakers were running his zone and completely forgot about the dunker spot. And Paul Millsap, being the veteran that he is, veteran savvy player, because that's every that's they say that every time Paul Millsap does anything, the veteran savvy player finds the dunker spot. Jamal Murray, poop, no look to him, dunk. And then the three on Alice Caruso to to completely get it done. And I think Jokic in his post game is like, I don't care what anybody says, he's a superstar. And I'm not going to say he is a superstar, but the way he has been playing in the past. Last round, you got to give it to the Clippers. They kind of neutralized him to some extent. Um, you got to think about it. They were throwing Paul George. They were throwing Kawhi. They were throwing Pat Bev. They were throwing every perimeter defender they had at him. So he struggled to some extent. I mean, he still had a couple big games. But um, the Lakers don't really have that level of perimeter play. So perimeter def- defense. So... Jamal Murray can do what he does. And the Lakers, again, they had this run where I was like, let's let's go. Because at this point, before the run, it was boring. It wasn't, it wasn't a very good game. I mean, the Nuggets were looking amazing, and the Lakers were like they didn't want to play. You know what I'm saying? If you're a Nuggets fan, that's a recipe for a great game. But it just is a casual, not a casual, but like a neutral fan, it wasn't looking very good until the Lakers put together this run. But one thing that really bothered me throughout the entirety of this game and I want to take a look at some stats here to see if... Yeah, okay, so Anthony Davis finished with two rebounds this game. And I promise you he had zero until like the last minute or two of the game. That is literally unacceptable from our all-NBA first-team center, because that's, that's what he was this season, playing 42 minutes. There's no world where he should end up with two rebounds. Kind of, kind of makes me want to go through like his game log of this entire season. Like that has to be like one of the lowest rebounded games of, the, of his career. It's just because he's always been a double-double guy. I mean, this season he didn't technically average a double-double because he's playing with LeBron and LeBron's going to get his rebounds too, but he's always been a guy that's going to get eight, nine rebounds a game. And going through this game log-wise – he had one game this season where he had one rebound. That was against the, the Atlanta Hawks, so they won by 20. But other than that, he's he's never put up these type of numbers, ever. Like, ever <laughs> on the rebound tip. And not even just that. JaVel McGee didn't play that many minutes, but he ended up with two, one rebound. And Dwight Howard ended up with one rebound. And why I'm talking about Dwight Howard, uh, if y'all don't know, these are all unscripted. I don't have, like, a key bullet points. I'm kind of just talking off the dome. Game one, Dwight Howard looked amazing. He was a energy guy. It looked like he was kind of getting under Jokic's skin. He was in the the huddles of the Nuggets, just trying to be a pesk, and he was doing that very well. But Jokic and the Denver Nuggets have adjusted, and in the last two games, he hasn't done anything but foul. Literally, he hasn't done anything but foul in his minutes. He went from a guy from game one, I was like, oh, snap, Dwight might legit be an X Factor. Going against a guy... Like, Jokic, he might be an X-Factor, then after that, Jokic is like, he's not even there. He does nothing but foul. Right? He does nothing but foul. And one of the reasons why JaVale McGee hasn't really got that many minutes in, I guess, last series because of the small ball, and in this series, is because he would be guarding the focal point of the offense. And though JaVale McGee is a solid defender, he's not guard the focal point of the offense, good defender in a playoff game type player. You know what I'm saying? But the four fouls from Dwight this game, I don't know how many he had last game, but it just seems like the only thing he does other than game one is to kind of clap in people's face and foul. And I want to take a look at the numbers here. Yeah, the eye test did not serve me wrong. The Nuggets destroyed the Lakers on the glass. I mean, that is that is crazy to think about because they, Mason Plumlee did not get minutes this game. I mean, he may have got a couple, but like he didn't play significant minutes. They kept running out the lineup of Millsap of Grant and Jokic, and then you got to think about the Lakers ran a bunch of minutes of Dwight Howard, a bunch of minutes of JaVale McGee and Anthony Davis together. There's no reason for them to lose the rebound and tip 44 to 25. 
absolutely dominated on that. And one thing I can say about the Denver Nuggets, and we've seen this, that they're resilient and they are a reactionary team, it seems like. We're like, yeah, it may take them three games before they realize what they have to do to win a series, but they are good enough to rea- read and react and adjust accordingly. And I feel like maybe that's what they've done in game three. Again, I'm still picking the Lakers to win this series, but I don't think this is a cakewalk series. Um, LeBron, and, and sometimes I try to figure out if I expect too much of LeBron. To me, he is the best player in basketball still at the age of 77 years old or however old he is. He is still the best player in basketball. Um, But there are moments where, like, I would love for him to assert himself as the best player in basketball. And during this run, he was looking good. He was playmaking. But I wanted him to snap it from playmaker Bron to scoring LeBron because he can do that. But at the end of the day, he was probably pretty, pretty gassed. You know, LeBron is always going to be a guy that's going to make the right basketball play. And passing to Cal Kuzma in that situation was the right basketball play. But sometimes as a fan – you would like to see him take over the game in more than his playmaking. I hope I'm making sense here. Because, like, when it comes to the right basketball play, throwing it to Cal Kuzma in that situation was the right play. And if Cal Kuzma hit the shot, we'd be praising LeBron for making the play. But the fact that Cal Kuzma didn't hit the shot makes me want to say, like, hey, let's drive to the paint a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Somebody said, am I recording? That's... That's very, very weird. How, how can he tell that? Do you see that? I don't – how does he know that? I'm not live on Twitch right now. How would he know if I'm I'm recording? I'm so confused on that. All right. Well, that's that's spooky. Bulls in 6, 2023. He might legit be for the future. And if that's the case, that sounds great to me. Bulls in 6, Ws. Um, what do I expect from game four? I would expect LeBron to come out. You remember that one game he dropped like 20 points in the first half? I want to. I think LeBron's going to come out like, okay, I need to go up 3-1. And I know 3-1 has been a bad place to be if you're going against the Denver Nuggets. But I, I was looking for the stat, and I was listening to maybe it was Zach Lowe's podcast, and they were trying to figure out what is LeBron's record in a series when he's up 2-0. How, has LeBron ever blown a 2-0 series lead? And the consensus they came to without doing any research is no. So I don't I don't expect it to happen now, uh, but I'm glad that, that the Nuggets put together this game because if they went down 3-0, obviously it was over. But I didn't expect them to go down 3-0, honestly. I didn't. All right, let me know what you think about this series so far. Hopefully game – what are we looking for? Game four of the other conference finals does well tonight and there's something to talk about because I don't think I've actually even talked about that series on this channel either. So maybe you expect another video from me later tonight after that game. I really don't know. Really don't know. But thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe if you are new. I'm out.